video lesson 3.6 symmetry so when dealing with uh, objects sometimes we need to know uh, whether they have uh, symmetry there's two types of symmetry that we're going to refer to uh, that's rotational symmetry and uh, line symmetry or or reflective symmetry um, when dealing with figures in this case we have this first shape here which is a isosceles triangle uh, I do have a line of symmetry and that line is one that is going to essentially divide the figure into um, two pieces that one would reflect onto itself. So if we think of here, right through the uh, the vertex here of this isosceles triangle, uh, we can imagine that the left side here, the left side of this uh, triangle that has now created a much smaller triangle. If we were to fold it over this uh, red vertical line here, it would in fact land directly onto the right side of the um, original isosceles triangle. And so therefore this yellow triangle now would land directly on the green triangle and match perfectly. Uh, and that means that we do have a line of symmetry. Uh, from this in this isosceles triangle. Now, specifically uh, triangles, the unique thing about them is uh, we're going to have that that line of symmetry when we're dealing with uh, really any type of isosceles triangle, um, and as well as equilateral triangles, because um, an equilateral triangle is technically a special type of isosceles triangle because it does have two equal sides, but it is unique in that it doesn't have just two, it has a third one as well. So, uh, so, but when dealing with these lines of symmetry, uh, it's important to be able to identify them and determine how many they may be. So, the, this question here says, does every figure have line symmetry? Uh, and it's a good question to ask. And, you know, take a moment, think about it on your own, see if you can come up with a, a sentence uh, or a statement that you believe might work. And if you can't, then that's what these images down here are to help um, you think about. So if we actually went through the process here and tried to find uh, a line of symmetry for each one of them, um, that might help us determine whether every figure has a line of symmetry. Right? So let's again, let's start with this first one here over on the left here, the, the triangle. So does this have a line of symmetry? So if I again take my straight edge here and you know create a can I can create a line that's going to uh, essentially fold um, the one side of the image onto the other side and, and match up seamlessly. So again, you can start thinking like, you know, usually easiest thing to do is start thinking of vertical lines. Uh, this is clearly not going to land on there. I don't even get two triangles when I do that. Uh, so that's not going to work. Uh, let's try a horizontal because that would be another easy thing to envision. Again, same problem. I don't even get two triangles, so clearly I'm not going to happen there. Uh, and then through the vertices themselves, uh, a lot of times you'll get lines of symmetry through there. So if I was to go through like from this vertice through, uh, you know, could I draw a line here that would split it, quote unquote, right into two equal pieces and, you know, have one thing um, fold and again, I use that term fold onto itself. Um, and in this case, the answer is no. And, uh, you know, may may not be obvious enough for you right there. Uh, you know, again, sometimes you have to, it's, it's hard to envision. Um, if you have a piece of paper, you can literally physically fold the piece of paper on this line and kind of, you know, kind of see does this point land right onto this point? Does this side land right onto that side? And so on and so forth. But this is not going to have a line of symmetry uh, because this specific triangle is not an isosceles triangle. So therefore, in this situation, the answer is no. We do not have um, a line of symmetry. So this has no line symmetry. Okay, no line symmetry there. How about the rectangle here? So if I was, again, to uh, visualize or physically draw in lines, again, I, I like to draw uh, vertical lines first. I was off just a little bit there. Um, if I was to draw one right there, uh, that does look like I would be able to uh, split it into two equal pieces, uh, along with that horizontal one as well. So I do have, in this case, two lines of symmetry for that rectangle. 
Um, the real question is, is there a third one? You know, could I draw this uh, diagonal from one vertices to the other like so? Uh, will that take this side of my rectangle and land it directly on to this side? And again, at first glance, it might seem like that is th that is the case. But uh, if I was to sit here and uh, if I trace uh, ever so gently here, this little triangle that was created, all right, not the perfect trace, but if I was to do that. Now let's see here if it allows me to. All right, so let's see. Let's take this. Let's flip it, all right? All right, and then I'm just going to turn it so that the side that was touching the blue uh, now matches back up. So once I do something like this, now it's a lot clearer to see that that bottom uh, quote unquote triangle here would not reflect over and match up perfectly on the other side. It would in fact look like this where uh, the this vertice that was down here would now be pointing up here. So it, that blue line there is in fact not going to be um, a line of symmetry in this uh, uh, rectangle. So this rectangle here has two. Uh, over here on the third image here, we have a hexagon. Uh, and in fact, it's a regular hexagon, meaning all six sides are equal. So when we have regular hexagons, uh, we want to look for and identify two main key elements here. Um, the number of sides and the vertices. So if we have an equal number of sides, um, I'm going to have a number of lines of symmetry that is equal to that number of sides. The, the reason for this is because we can go from one vertex to the other, right? That would fold this right side onto this, the left side. I could do the same thing here, and I can do the same thing here. So that would be three lines of symmetry. Now, again, this being that it has a, a six uh sides i could also do that by splitting each of the sides in half um like so and going directly from one side to the other like so so in this case we actually have six lines of symmetry um when going all around now especially if you're trying to do this if there's a lot of sides or a lot of images or or a lot of uh, lines of symmetry here, um, it's really helpful to kind of help yourself out. So if you're actually counting, I would say, okay, I'm going to start with this one, and I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I go to this one here, quote unquote seven, that's the same thing as my first line. So the seven is not going to be the case. So, and then the same thing around here, this eighth spot is the same as two. So that line's already being counted. So I clearly now see that I have six lines of symmetry uh, for that hexagon. All right. Uh, in this last one here, again, I have a uh, parallelogram in this case. So does this have? Now, I think it's pretty straightforward and pretty obvious that uh, it does not have uh, a vertical line of symmetry. Uh, it does not have a horizontal line of symmetry. Uh, they are not going to fold uh, onto itself in those cases. The hardest one to see is diagonal. Does it have diagonal symmetry? And again, it kind of goes back to what we were sa I was saying before. Um, you kind of have to envision this because um, again, you don't have this you know fancy technology to be able to you know physically trace and start manipulating and rotating things like I can on the screen here. But if I kind of envision that for you, right? If we take this object, if I was to flip it, and again just line up exactly the side that was touching the red line uh, originally, it would look something like that. So therefore, it would not land on itself. Uh, so that's why we, in fact, do not have a line of symmetry uh, for this figure either. So it does not have a line of symmetry. So this one, just like our original, the answer is no lines of symmetry. All right, so take the opportunity to pause the video right now. Just try those on your own. See if you can um, get the same information and understanding of uh, how many types of lines of symmetry you can have, 
uh, being able to identify them and being able to figure out the total number for each figure. Now, rotational symmetry uh, is now if we're doing to, going to take that object and rotate it about the center of the figure. So we talked briefly about this in a previous uh, rotation video, but uh, essentially we want to make sure that it gets back onto itself. So we want this shape uh, or this figure here to map everything matching up exactly how it is once you rotate it. All right. So... Um, when we're doing rotational symmetries, we ignore um, two things. We, we know that every figure, um, if we don't rotate it at all, it's going to look like itself. And if we rotate it 360 degrees, it's going to be right back to where we started. So we're always looking for what's um, less than or in between, I should say, 0 and 360 degrees um, from there. So how do we find that center of rotation well first things is actually determine lines of symmetry if you have more than one line of symmetry then the object will have rotational symmetry so uh, some form of it so we want to take this so i have this hexagon and as we said earlier i could take this and i could divide it this way uh this way right through all the vertices Right, or else like I could have also gone straight through the center here, like so. Oops, that one's off a little bit. Now where those lines of symmetry intersect, that is going to be our center of rotation. So I'm just going to put a big point here indicating the center of rotation. So once again, uh, if you have a regular polygon, uh, we can just simply take the number of sides and divide that by 360 to determine uh, the minimum number of degrees it would take for this figure to rotate onto itself. So in this uh, situation, we have 360 degrees. I have a hexagon, so that's six sides. So if I was to do that and divide that out, I have a 60 degree rotation. So 60 degrees would put you know any one of the vertices onto the one right next to it. That would be 60 degrees. So uh, that first rotation would be 60, another 60 degrees would be get me to here, another 60 degrees would be here, so on and so forth, all the way around back to there. So uh, to find all of those uh, degrees, we simply just take the 60 degrees uh, and we just keep adding 60 degrees uh, to each rotation. And that's going to get me all of the degrees of rotation that are available to this figure. Uh, so in this case, 300 Right. If I was to go one more, that would get me to 360. And like I said, originally, we want to go between um, 0 and 360. So in this situation, uh, this hexagon would have uh, a total here of five uh, rotational symmetries. And that would be the degrees for each one of those. All right. The second figure here um, in this situation is if this is, in fact, an isosceles uh, triangle, right? if this side and this side are equal, then I will have um, a line of reflection. So uh, let's take a second and assume that this does have a, uh, this is isosceles, so that would make one line of symmetry. Again, if it only has a single line of symmetry, I don't have an intersection of uh, these lines of symmetry, so therefore I don't have a center of rotation, right? There's no way for me to rotate this um, anything other than 360 degrees to get it to look exactly the way it is right now. So this one does not have uh, any uh, rotational symmetry in this case. No rotational symmetry. Okay. With the rectangle over here, again, as we discussed a little bit earlier, we do have two um, lines of symmetry. We have both the horizontal and the vertical. So therefore, the intersection of those two lines would indicate, in fact, the center of rotation. So uh, so now the question is, can I just take 360 deg degrees divided by 4, uh, get 90, 180, 270, uh, and then again back to 360? Um, for this one, the answer is no, because it's not a regular polygon. Right. If I was to turn this uh, 90 degrees, uh, and again, if I just take a moment here and kind of, you know, sketch 
as neatly as I can here, right? Uh, and if I was to take that image and rotate it 90 degrees, it's going to look like this. So clearly 90 degrees is not going to get it back onto itself. Uh, if I keep going another 90 degrees, I do. I land right back uh, how we started. Another 90, no. Another 90, yes. Again, that would be 360 degrees. So in this case, this only has one answer for our situation. Again, between uh, 0 and 360, so it has 180 degrees of rotational symmetry um, when dealing with it. Right. So again, these are sometimes difficult uh, to see, to envision, so you do have to be careful. Uh, try your hardest, you know, to, uh, you know, visually manipulate the object um, in, your, in your head. Sometimes actually doing it on the paper is very useful. Um, and again, those lines of symmetry are very helpful when trying to determine if a rotational symmetry is even possible. All right, from there. So the identity symmetry is an interesting concept as well. So we want to be able to identify all aspects of symmetry. So uh, this one, we have a couple things being asked for us to do here. So we have, first off, a pentagon. So it wants me to draw, part A says, draw all lines of symmetry. So I'm going to go back here, get my line tool, and I'm going to start drawing lines of symmetry that go through this. Now, earlier on, I mentioned if it's a regular polygon, uh, which this is, um, all the sides are going to be equal. So I have a, penta a regular pentagon here. The problem is I can't just connect all of the vertices like we did earlier with the hexagon. Because uh, if I was to start connecting the vertices like so, uh, I am not going to be able to cut this image in half uh, or have one side reflect onto the other. Uh, again, I don't even get the same shape. I get a triangle on the side and I get a um, quadrilateral, which actually looks like a trapezoid in this case, uh, on the right side. So I can't just connect the vertices. If I had an even number of sides, then I could. But given that I don't here, in this case, I have an odd number of sides, I'm not going to get the ones that have uh, from vertice to vertice. But I can go from the uh, one vertice to the midpoint of the other side. So if I was to split uh, line segment ED right in half, I could draw a line from B through there, and that would be, in fact, a line of symmetry. And I can do that for each one of these lines, and I'm sorry, each one of these vertices. So if I do that from A as well, I could do that from E, D and C. All right. Now, uh, again, when doing this, uh, you obviously ask for the number um, of things. So in this case, if I look down, actually uh, D is actually the answer to this. How many reflection symmetries do we have, or AKA lines of symmetry? So again, go around and count them. Um, when I'm doing this, I have a tendency to draw it from the vertices through the other side, so it's easier for me to count. Right, because I got one, two, so one, two, three, four, five. Again, just makes it a little bit easier. But again, I could have extended the lines through the vertices. It wouldn't have mattered. Um, so to answer this one, actually, we can answer part five, right? Uh, part um, D already, and say that I have five uh, lines of symmetry or reflectional symmetry. All right. Uh, by finding all of these, I have now also answered part B here and found the, the location of the center uh, of this uh, figure, which will allow me now to determine how many um, rotational symmetries we have. Again, due to the fact that it is a, a regular polygon, I can simply take 360 degrees, divide by 5, and that's going to get me the answer to how many of these is, um, would be the minimum, I'm sorry, the minimum number of degrees it would take. So that would be, uh, what is that, 72 degrees, right? So that allows me now to know that I have uh, the minimum number. So if I'm looking for all of them, I can just simply say 72, right? If I start adding 72, um, another 72, right? You're going to get 144, another 72, that's going to be, was it, 216, uh, another 72 is going to be 288, right? And if I go one more time, I'm going to get back to 360, uh, which again, we only want between 0 and 360. So 
once I get to 360, I now know that I have one, two, three, four uh, rotational symmetries. So in this in this case, the answer would be four rotational symmetries. Now again, be careful if the question specifically states um, that to include the 360, then you want to make sure you do that as well. Um, and sometimes it'll be inside the question whether it's asking you to determine whether it is or is not uh, included that 360. So if it does say uh, 360, then you would just simply add in that number and it was in this case the answer would be five so again just be careful of the question and the way they're wording it to determine whether it is in fact including that 360 or not uh, and that's remember that's the um could be unique for each type of situation all right well th take this opportunity to pause the video try these on your own and make sure you understand the uh ability to find both the reflectional symmetries and rotational symmetries of really any figure uh that you can draw